Envision is a prototyping, uh, collaboration, and workflow tool. And in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction uh, on uh, how to use uh, Envision. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head up uh, on uh, envisionapp.com. We're going to click on Get Started. Now, as you can see, we're going to be asked uh, to enter our work email, our name, uh, our role, and also a password. Uh, and after that, we can easily sign up to the platform. Now, once we've done that, you can see that you're going to be asked to create a team, which is a very straightforward process. Simply click on create a team and we're going to add a team name and also a domain associated to that team. At this point, Simply click on uh, the Create Team button and uh, you can add the uh, email addresses of uh, your team members. At this point, we're going to be greeted with uh, the initial homepage dashboard where you can actually start creating a document by clicking here on uh, Start Creating or on uh, Create New. Now, just before we do that, uh, we want uh, to emphasize that on the left side panel, you're going to find all your documents, spaces, people associated to your team, uh, as well as uh, apps uh, that uh, you or your team are using. You can also add uh, your favorite in order to organize uh, all your favorite documents uh, within uh, spaces by creating a group. We're going to click uh, on Create New and uh, at this point, we see this uh, drop-down panel. Now, we can uh, decide to use, uh, for example, the freehand feature of Envision, which is going to enable you to create brainstorming uh, and uh, strategic documents. Uh, or if uh, you prefer to start with uh, a template, you can directly go and uh, use uh, one of uh, these options right here. We're going to select the blank freehand and uh, this uh, is going to prompt uh, this uh, new freehand document. Now, as a first time uh, user, you're going to be asked if uh, you're currently using a trackpad or if you're using a mouse in order to optimize uh, the experience. We're going to simply select the uh, mouse since uh, that's what I'm using at the moment and uh, most likely most of the users are going to use the mouse. And as you can see, if we use uh, command and uh, the scroll mouse, we can actually zoom in and zoom out. And uh, this is going to basically be the base for navigation as well as uh, simply dragging and uh, moving around uh, to basically uh, move uh, in uh, the X and the Y axis. Now at this point, we're going to find uh, some uh, useful introductory uh, elements uh, to get started. So this is going to be a, a template, which uh, is going to enable us to understand all the basics of uh, Envision. And uh, we're simply going to dismiss this uh, for the time being as uh, we're going to explore the elements uh, in uh, individually. So the first element that uh, you wanted to learn about uh, when using Envision Freehand uh, is uh, the sticky note. So you can simply select it and you can uh, create uh, a sticky note directly here in Envision. So we're going to write, uh, for example, list one, and uh, we're going to add uh, the slash at the beginning or actually a hyphen, and uh, we can easily create a list. We can change uh, the color of this uh, sticky note very easily and choose from uh, one of the presets, uh, as you see here on the top. Uh, we can also format the text uh, as you would uh, in uh, most uh, WYSIWYG editors. So I can make it italic, I can highlight the text uh, with uh, a specific uh, color, and uh, I can also change uh, the alignment. So if uh, I just uh, go ahead and uh, change it to center, you can see that all the text is now centered. You can also create a list, which is either a bullet list or a numbered list. 
So you can easily do that uh, directly from here. And uh, of course, you can also add uh, hyperlinks. So if I go ahead, uh, write in google.com, I can uh, <clears throat> easily add this uh, hyperlink uh, to the sticky note. All right, now another useful feature which you're going to use all the time is going to be the type, of course. So I'm just simply going to write uh, lorem ipsum. I can drag uh, this text uh, in the timeline. And uh, as you can see, it's not uh, big enough uh, for us uh, to do. So I'm simply going to increase the size and uh, I'm going to bring it here on the center. You can easily change uh, the color. You can make it uh, bold, for example, or italic or even highlighted. And uh, all of the other options which we, de which we just discussed uh, are going to be available uh, directly here. Now you can also add over here text type. So if it's going to be in a sticky note, just text uh, or in a card. So this uh, is going to enable you to prompt these options uh, real quick. Uh, you can also copy a link. If there is a link associated, you can lock it so that you can uh, easily just move uh, this item around uh, within uh, the Envision canvas. And uh, you can also have uh, granular options as to where this uh, text uh, layer is going to be located compared to other elements. So for example, if we explore the second option, which is going to be the shapes, and uh, we go ahead and we add, uh, for example, this uh, uh, ellipse right here, simply going to change the color. And I'm probably going to go with uh, partial fill or actually full fill in order to really make this concept clear. And uh, if I go ahead and uh, just for the sake of demonstration, I click over here and say to Envision, bring this to the front. You can see that now we can uh, organize the hierarchy within uh, our text layer uh, or actually text layer in relation to the other shape. So this is it when it comes to the basics. There's a few different uh, uh, options. And again, you can find all sorts of different shapes uh, directly from here. So these are going to be really useful for us uh, to work with. You can uh, leverage the pencil tool if uh, you need to note down uh, a uh, an element or, or an idea in a free format. You can also change the stroke over here. You can even make it dashed or dotted. Which is going to be really useful to create connection points and really merge these ideas out. There's also the layout feature, which it's going to be quite granular. So for example, if I go up over here, I can create a border real quick. So these layouts are going to enable us to create uh, all sorts uh, of different items. This is very similar to a Trello card, uh, for example, or Trello board. I can also create a grid, which as you can see is going to enable us to add the uh, text uh, and uh, things of that nature. You can also add other type of content. You can add a table, which uh, again, it's going to be quite granular. So this, uh, these are all tools that are going to be essential whenever you are working on a brainstorming or strategy session. So this is, is really going to be really useful. I myself, I'm a designer. I've been a, a UI UX designer for the past decade. And I can tell you that these tools from a strategic standpoint, uh, whenever you're creating brainstorming uh, sessions or really useful, especially since uh, you have to always keep in mind that Envision uh, is uh, great for collaboration because you can have multiple team members in the same file. So this is a collaborative uh, uh, element or a collaborative space where you can uh, work and uh, do brainstorming sessions uh, directly 
in uh, Team. Uh, this is another one which is uh, quite similar to uh, a regular document, uh, uh, probably like a text document, similarly to what you would be uh, used to Notion. And uh, this is a frame which is going to enable you to create uh, a organized space so you can add uh, UX flows, uh, a set of screens uh, or mood boards directly into a single unit uh, in space. Now, there's also a few different uh, um, options. You can also upload uh, uh, elements. So, for example, if uh, I go over here, I can select uh, an image and uh, I can easily upload it uh, within uh, this canvas. And um, you can also drag and drop images directly here. So that's quite uh, quite easy. You can also change the size. Uh, so if you want it to be half the size, uh, simply click on, on over here. You can add a border, you can add shadows, and uh, also select the fit. The fit. And um, you can also download uh, the image, which uh, is quite useful if uh, a other team member uploaded an image and uh, you want to download that specific image. You can change the rotation directly from here, lock it as all the other ones, all, all the other elements, and uh, also copy the link and as well all the other basic options that we, uh, we've seen just a moment ago. Now, another really useful feature is going to be the comments. So, for example, I can go over here and uh, mention uh, change this illustration to green. And uh, I can also mention uh, team uh, members or directly from here. So, for example, since in this team uh, I'm the only one at the moment, you're simply going to see my name, but uh, you can absolutely mention uh, anyone within your team organization that has been added to the Envision uh, um, archive or platform. And uh, you can also add emojis, because why not? Emojis make uh, everything uh, better in uh, this digital world. And uh, you can also discard uh, the comment, uh, assign this uh, as a task which uh, something which is quite uh, uh, quite unique. And as you're going to see, the moment that they add a comment, uh, you're going to visualize it uh, directly on the comments panel, which is uh, on the far right. So when uh, a comment uh, has been uh, tackled, you can uh, simply click on resolve, and this is going to resolve uh, all the comments. Now. That being said, uh, you can uh, always uh, see resolved comments uh, at any given moment by simply clicking on this option. So everything uh, that uh, your team has resolved uh, can be checked uh, by a manager or by yourself uh, in a, a very easy and uh, strategic way. So at this point, uh, we want to also mention uh, something which uh, might uh, seem like a small uh, element, uh, which is the reactions, but it's actually quite useful since uh, you can easily um, use this uh, in uh, UX and uh, UI context, such as uh, if you have multiple screens uh, on uh, a canvas, uh, for example, say that I'm working on an iOS uh, uh, project and uh, I add uh, multiple concepts that uh, as a designer I'm exploring. I can then invite uh, the team uh, and uh, I can ask them uh, uh, what uh, is uh, their preference regarding the different options. And uh, they can leave, for example, a comment like this uh, or a reaction like this, uh, which uh, is going to enable um, you to see also who reacted uh, in that way so that you can create uh, all sorts of different uh, voting uh, systems directly into Envision. So this is quite uh, quite useful. And uh, 
top of that, uh, another element that uh, you might want uh, to consider is uh, the version history. If you ever want to go back uh, in time and see what uh, was the previous version of this file, you can easily do that uh, directly from the version history. So that's, uh, that's another thing which is uh, quite useful. If uh, we go back, uh, we're going to see also the explore section, which uh, is going to give us all sorts uh, of uh, different uh, elements and templates that you can use uh, within uh, uh, within this, uh, this artboard. So I am going to leave it um, at that for, for you to explore, because uh, it's probably going to be outside of the introductory purposes of uh, this uh, video but uh, it's definitely a nice uh, resource uh, to have and explore. You can also present uh, a, um, an element, uh, a canvas directly from here. So you can select uh, by either walking through frames, uh, so you can go frame by frame, uh, or if uh, you have uh, a presentation which is not uh, following a set of screens, uh, you can easily use the follow my canvas view. So everybody that is going to be within uh, this uh, freehand document uh, is uh, going to enable you, uh, it's going to see exactly what uh, you're seeing. So the moment that you're moving, uh, their screen is also going to move uh, in a screen share fashion. On top of that, you can easily share this uh, free hand directly from uh, from here and uh, you can uh, decide if uh, the members of uh, your team are going to uh, be able to edit or can simply comment so they won't have edit access to this uh, specific document so this is um, definitely something that comes in uh, very handy and uh, this is it when it comes to the basic of uh, freehand. Of course, you want to change also the, the name. So in order to rename a document, uh, you can easily do that from here. And in order to go back uh, to your initial homepage, simply click on this arrow and uh, all the changes are going to be saved. So that's all uh, um, good to go in uh, that uh, sense. Now at this point, uh, what we want to do is uh, to explore some uh, other features of uh, Envision. Now we're going to learn uh, how to create uh, a prototype. So we're going to go over here under Create New, and we're going to select the prototype. At this point, uh, we're going to be asked uh, what is uh, the type of prototype that we're working on. In this case, I'm going to select iPhone 13 and uh, to name the prototype, which is going to be iOS app. Let's click on create. And uh, as you can see, we have a uh, few different options in order to create this prototype. The first one uh, is going to, to be syncing the files uh, from uh, Sketch, which uh, is simply going to um, require you to have uh, the craft plugin installed, uh, you can easily sync uh, directly your files uh, within a sketch file. In my case, since I'm a Figma user, I'm going to use uh, a drag and drop uh, option, which uh, is going to be over here. So I'm going to simply click uh, on browse your files. And uh, I have this uh, folder, which uh, contains uh, three different screens. So I'm going to select all of them using the shift key and uh, I'm going to click on open. As you can see, we now have uh, the three screens uh, directly from uh, here. So the very first thing that I'm noticing is that they are quite small and I want to increase the size uh, just a little bit of the preview. And I also want to change uh, the um, the order. So I'm simply going to drag and drop the first one over here. Now, as you might have noticed, the numbers aren't correct. I should have uh, this one as the first one. So I'm simply going to click on the name and uh, I'm going to 
do the same for these other screens. So you can easily rename screens directly in Envision. Other few useful options and uh, features are going to be uh, this one here, which uh, is telling me how much time ago there was the last update to the screen. There's some uh, search field. So if you have a project with uh, many screens, uh, you can easily just type in the, the name of the screen uh, and you're going to see the search result. There's the filters. So comments that, uh, um, or screens that has comments or has unread comments. You can also search by label since you can easily apply labels for approved screens, screens that needs review, or even in progress. And uh, you can also manage labels so you can create uh, your own personal variations of that. You can also sort them by A to Z, date updated, or even the order if uh, there is uh, that uh, uh, availability in that moment. You can also change uh, the view to list view. So this is going to be quite useful in some instances. And you can organize uh, screens in sets as you can see right here. So for example, if I create a new set and I call it onboarding, I can uh, easily select uh, all of the screens from here and uh, I can uh, send them to either uh, freehand, which is the prototype, or even more easily, I can move them, oops, I believe uh, to onboarding. So I'm going to select all of them <clears throat> and I can easily move them over, over there. Now, at this point, one thing that uh, you might want to consider uh, is um, adding new screens, which you can easily do that from here or simply dragging and dropping them. And uh, we are actually ready to jump right into the prototyping features. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on uh, the very first screen. And as you can see, we are greeted uh, with this uh, interface uh, right uh, here, which is going to enable you to essentially see the screen uh, within a prototype uh, area. And you can click uh, or even use the arrow keys uh, in order to move around uh, between uh, screens. Now, one of the most important uh, features about uh, the prototype uh, is uh, the build mode. And uh, if you click on build mode, you can see that now we can add uh, hotspots by simply clicking and dragging. And uh, I can always change the hotspot. So if it's too big, uh, you can simply resize it. And uh, I can select a destination from here. So in this case, destination is going to be screen two. There's a few different options when uh, you're creating this type of links. The first one is going to be the trigger. It's going to be on tap. It's going to be double tap, swipe right, swipe left, swipe up or down. So that depends on the type of element that you're working with. In this case, it's going to be tap. You can also change the transition, which instant is going to instantly change the screen to the other one. There's the solve, let's push right, push left, and uh, all these other options right here, which uh, I invite you to explore. In this case, we're simply going to go with uh, uh, push right uh, or even push left. Uh. Actually, let's go with push left. Uh. And uh, you can also include the hotspot uh, in uh, the template. I'm going to click on save. And at this point, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to preview this. So play mode, click on get started. As you can see, we have the, the screen uh, working. Pretty easy, pretty simple overall. And uh, you can also click over here in order to see all the screens uh, directly in uh, a more visual way. And uh, 
if you go on the second one, I can go on build mode again, select this uh, element right here, select free, and uh, I can change uh, the transition again. So if I go back, uh, I can easily have this, uh, this option established. You can also add comments directly on uh, the uh, screen. So again, I can write to a, a team member of mine with the at, change the map to a London map. So this can be easily done in a very similar fashion as freehand. And uh, one uh, useful tool, which uh, is not going to enable us uh, to uh, access it at this given moment because we uploaded PNG screens, uh, so static screens, uh, is uh, going to be the inspect mode. The inspect mode is going to be available only with the Figma plugin and the Craft plugin. So once you sync uh, the screens directly, via Figma or Sketch uh, with either one of those plugins, we're going to be able to inspect it and see all the CSS code, all the layout uh, uh, details. Uh, but basically, it's going to give the developers granular um, basic knowledge and data to develop uh, your screens in a pixel perfect manner. Now, a few different options which uh, are important to, to consider is uh, the export option, which is going to enable you to download the screen or export the text layers. The global appearance, so this is going to be elements uh, like uh, the skin. For example, I can change the device skin, I can change the, can change the color. I can also change uh, the background color and uh, even the the image and uh, you have a few different other options which you can uh, easily change directly from uh, from here so i'm going to click on apply settings and uh, you can toggle the theme directly from this option you can uh, add a label for example if this uh, prototype uh, screen is approved so we're going to click on approved and uh, here you can see all of the team members which are, are currently viewing uh, this file and uh, you can also click on uh, share in order to share this uh, prototype with uh, other team members so you can actually make this uh, public or share it just with uh, members and the uh, guests uh, of uh, your organization. I can also click uh, on uh, collaborate and uh, this is going to basically bring uh, this project uh, within uh, a freehand document. So you also have uh, this uh, ability and uh, opportunity to cross collaborate uh, directly with uh, other team members uh, from uh, uh, from freehand uh, instead of uh, <clears throat> just the prototype. So these are going to be the most uh, useful and used uh, elements which uh, you're going to encounter in uh, Envision for the very most part. There's definitely more. Um, there's options such as you know, notifications. These are going to be all of the major notifications that you're going to uh, receive uh, from uh, both your design projects and your team. And uh, again, you can also create spaces which uh, are essentially, um, as they say, as they mentioned here, create a space to keep related documents together so they're always easy to find. So I can go over here and uh, add a name going to be design project and uh, I can easily add the documents uh, directly into this uh, this space uh, so that it's all well organized uh, and um, apart from that uh, 
of people so you can easily manage your team directly from here you can revoke uh, access or give access to team members from here and then there's also integrations of apps uh, which uh, are very uh, useful especially if you have uh, uh, some of these uh, very common apps uh, such as Slack, uh, Trello, Zoom, uh, Jira there's a lot of integrations, but this is going to be the topic for another video since uh, this can go quite uh, in uh, depth. And uh, so this uh, is pretty much it for this uh, introduction to Envision. I really hope uh, it was helpful. And if you want to learn more about uh, design, uh, I myself am a designer with over 10 years of experience uh, and uh, I share my knowledge for free on uh, my YouTube uh, videos. Uh, so feel free to check out my channel and uh, I'll see you in the very next one.